Um, thank you all for being on our team call for this week. I know a lot of you will be catching this as a recording, so thank you for listening to the recording. Um, my name is Brigitte Linford, and I'm just going to kick us off here and quickly turn the time over to our special guest speaker for tonight. Um, and if I call her Brenna, it's because you guys will see her name on here as Brenna, but it is Samantha Rosenthal. Um, she is a leader on our team who is just killing it and has just done an incredible job in this business. You will often see her as someone who is being recognized as a top recruiter on our team. And um, I think she just has a knack for talking about this business in a very easy way where it's not like it, you don't read her post and be like, oh, that was really awkward to read it or must have been awkward for her to write it. Like it just, it just is obvious that this is just like a very natural thing for her to talk about. So it's never a surprise to me when I see her recruiting numbers because I see her post and I think she just has a knack for talking about this business in a great way. Um, she is also someone who has done some coach open houses um, where we've done them on Facebook as a team. She has done them on Instagram. Um, so you either call it a, an open house, coach open house, or coach sneak peek. If there's any new coaches on, the, on this call, that's just where you kind of put things all into a group and you explain this business. Um, and she's done it through Instagram. And I know that there's been people who have messaged me and expressed interest on how do you do that? And is it worth it? Is it worth your time? Is it worth the energy to do it? So I am so grateful that Samantha was willing to do this call because she is the one that I thought would be so perfect to talk about all things recruiting and sharing this business on Instagram. So Samantha, I will turn this time over to you. Let me see if it will let me unmute you. There you go. Um, and let you take it from here. She is a busy mom. You might see some kids in the background, I think, because <laughs> this is life, right? But thank you so much, Samantha, and I'll let you take it from here. Okay. Thank you so much for having me on this call and you're introducing me and how you're saying that I'm like good at recruiting is, is well, such a compliment and thank you. But it's funny because I was not always, I guess it's not funny, but it's cool or I'm proud of myself and I couldn't remember, I was like trying to think of how I was going to segue because I figured you would say like, oh, she's really great at explaining the business and I kept chuckling to myself because I was someone who like did nothing with the business in regards to recruiting for years. Like I had a dream, I saw the vision and PS if like Netflix gets a little loud and you're like, hey, we can't hear you. Uh, just let me know. But um, my kids are in the background and this is life. <laughs> so um, I just didn't, I was scared to take action. I was, I knew that if you wanted to have a big business, you needed to grow a team. And I just did nothing. So anyways, um, if, if me, Samantha, the first year one, two or three saw this call and was like, oh, this girl is going to talk about sneak peeks. I'm going to get on because that is what I'm missing. I just need to run a good sneak peek or I just need to um, like do the best webinar, have the best posts. Then I will have the big team. And that's just not really how it works. Um, I believe that sneak peeks and webinars and all of these things are really great tools. But it's, there is no vital behavior of like run a sneak peek and it's not on your success club tracker. So it's extra and it's super important and, and great, but please do not rely on these things. So we're going to talk about sneak peeks, but I'm going to make you work for it. And we're going to talk about that all the way at the end of the call because this is the analogy I came up with. And I um, always come up with really funny analogies. <laughs> My team will tell you, um, but the business. Okay. So you wouldn't, okay, so think, stay with me here. You're going to do a workout, you drink Shakeology, and you have Energize. So your workout and your Shakeology are like your base. That is like something that you absolutely need to do to get results. So I'm going to swap this, that you talking about the coaching opportunity, what you do as a coach, how someone else could do it too on social media, and inviting people in your, in like direct messages, actually inviting one individual person 
notes and not doing like a call to action, um, that is your base. Like you have to do those things to get results. Energize is like this extra fun thing that makes your results maybe a little bit better and it helps you push yourself in your workouts and it, you know, you know, it's fun. Energize is fun. It's like, makes you feel all good. You like either clean your house or like have a dance party before your workout. Energize is great. That is a sneak peek. So a sneak peek is fun. It's, um, I think it can enhance your results, but if you were to drink energize and stand in the room and do nothing, you would not have any results from your workout program. So if you are going to, if you're doing nothing and then you host a sneak peek, you're going to get no results. It is, um, it's extra, I don't want to say it's extra because I do think it's important and I do think Energize is like everything under the sun. It is like how I get through my life, but that's not how I'm getting my fitness results. So that's kind of the analogy I wanted to talk about. So what we are going to talk about tonight is your mindset about talking about the coaching opportunity and your mindset in your own coaching journey then how to be in people's DMs, talking about the coaching opportunity, and then how to talk about it on social media, and then we're gonna get to sneak peeks. <laughs> um, but, so who am I? So really fast, I am a mom of three babies, um, four years old and younger, so a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a one-year-old. Two of them are in the bed behind me, and one of them is in bed, thank goodness, for a seven o'clock call. One of them will need me in, this, <laughs> in the time we do this call. Um, but that's just life. I share that openly because I don't think this isn't a business that you have to do away from your family. It's something you can do all together. And that is completely how I run my business. Um, and it's there, they're there all the time because there's, there's like no other way to do it when you have small children. Um, I solo parent pretty much 90% of the time because of my husband's hours. And we have, chaos is the way of our game. We've moved three times in three years and have had three babies. So we've been a little bit busy. Um, and I have, um, I think that that's helped my business, to be honest, when I started using it and remembering that the busier you are and the crazier your life is and the harder that you're, um, just trying to be your best self and you're sharing that journey, I get less objections. Honestly, I, I mean, I'm not saying that every person I ask is like, yes, please, I'll join a challenge group or yes, let me join your team. They usually either ghost me or like, like kind of, they don't really object because they see the craziness of my life. And I like last year was one of, well, before this year was the best year in my business and I was pregnant the whole year. So craziness is, is good. I think, I think what we are as coaches is um, we're showing that all we're trying to be is our best self. We're not trying to be someone necessarily on the cover of a magazine or, you know, any necessarily level of perfection. We're just trying to be our best self. So if you're doing that, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Um, as long as you're sharing that, I think that that's important. So that's kind of who I am now, but I started as a coach in 2015 and I had just, just like give you background, but I, purchased 21 day fix, um, before I got pregnant with my son, my oldest one. Um, and then I got pregnant and I was like, well, why would you do anything to be healthy? This is like the time you get to do whatever you want. And that bit me in the butt because then I ended up gaining a significant amount of weight for my body. And it wasn't necessarily weight. Looking back now, I realized that I ate so awful that I just bloated. So I was like a Oompa Loompa from the salt of that is how much processed foods I was eating. Like, like fast food on the regular. I didn't know how to cook. That was not something that was taught to us. Like it was, and we'll get to that in a minute, but like, that was just not a model that was going on. So um, I then had my son and I'm a fix fixer. So, you know, after the initial like swelling went down of after you have a baby and the, you know, the mesh panties came off, sorry, men on the call, but I was like, okay, we need to do something about this. I don't really feel good. I have a baby. And I had this all of a sudden, like crazy purpose for my life. And it's not like I was super lost before. Um, I had technically checked off all the boxes that I was aiming to check off. Um, and, but 
this baby gave me a purpose that I had never felt before. And so I was like, I need to be my best self because me being feeling tired and sluggish is not going to be best for him. And so I messaged my coach and I was like, Hey, can I come back in a group? I still have my DVDs and I have like three fourths of a bag of Shakeology because before I thought it was a bunch of crap. So she was like, yes. So I went all in for the 21 days and I couldn't tell you how much, how many inches I lost or how many pounds um, I had lost, but I felt incredible. So with an eight week old, I felt better than when I had my entire previous 25 years of life. And I was like, there is something magical going on here. Like, how can I feel more energized, less foggy, more confident and strong in my head just after this? And so so, you know, through the next couple of groups that I did, just repeating 21 day fix, because that's just what you did back then. You just had DVDs like you, there was no BOD. <laughs> so um, it was just a natural progression that I became a coach. Like I was telling people about it. And if I, the fast food queen, could figure out these containers and squeeze in 30 minutes with a newborn and Shakeology was helping me when I had all of these digestive issues that I was seeing specialists about and all that stuff, then I was like, everyone needs to know about this. I didn't look at it as selling. And so I, social media has been my strong point since the beginning because I just was like, you like, and it wasn't, I, I just didn't see it as being salesy. I just was like, everyone should do this because it's incredible. And I knew that the price was worth it because of what it is. So anyways, that was kind of like my, my journey with the products and how I fell in love. And I think that it's important to remember that you have two stories. You have one, that story when you first come into a challenge group and you feel really great. And then you have a story of your entire life, of the narratives that are told in your head or the, the patterns that we think we are or the limiting beliefs or the confidence, any of those things. We come from an entire story before we become a coach. And sometimes we forget about that story. And I didn't realize how broken I was until I started healing. And I was like, oh, I got a lot of work to do here. And I didn't really know that because when you're, when you're struggling and when you're in survival mode, that's just the normal, right? So you're not like your, your level of survival is just the normal. So I come into this business and I'm like, let's do it. Like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Like, I'm so excited. This is incredible. But to become a successful coach, you have to grow internally way more than you have to like do a thousand pushups. Um, and I didn't realize how, how broken I was. And I don't say that like, oh, poor me. Um, but I had a story of, I came from struggle. I came from a house of what's the word, um, uh, trauma, <laughs> but that sounds kind of heavy, but there was addiction, uh, there was divorce, there was borderline neglect, there was a lot of stuff, there's, you know, hands, hands behind me, um, there was a lot of stuff going on that I didn't realize, hey, can you, can you sit down, it's recorded, let's not have you, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so when I started really leaning into my goals and being like, oh, this is the vision I have for my life to put, put, to, to quiet all of the narrative that had happened my whole life that, Hey, life is struggle. Life is hard. Um, all that stuff, that voice that was in my head was a lot louder than I thought. So I just started trying to be better and it took a lot longer for me to be ready to go hard. So if there's coaches on this team that feels like it's not happening fast enough for you, just want you to know that I've been there and to not give up. And I'm really, really proud of myself that I didn't give up because I'm here now. And even though it took way longer, it, that's not robbing it from the joy. And I've had so many calls with Brigida over the years that she was like, just keep going, just keep going. Like, it doesn't matter when it happens. And she's, she's right. You know, and you hear these things on calls in you're going into these situations, you know, I can build this business and I can do that. And it's kind of on blind faith, but truly everyone has a different, um, like level one that they're coming to this business with. And so you can't compare how fast someone grows or what someone does or how many they coaches they recruit or what success club numbers they are, because we are all strong and need improvement in, in different things. So 
ultimately I didn't do anything with the business because I was scared and I knew I wanted to grow a big team because I had these dreams and these visions and I watched top coaches like compulsively and I wanted it, but I didn't do anything about it. To, if you want a big team, you have to invite to coaching. So like write that down. If you want any of your goals, <laughs> You have to invite to coaching. You have to talk to people. You have to invite to a challenge group. You have to be inviting. If you're not inviting every single day, you don't have a business. And it's really crazy I'm saying that because I used to not invite every day and I considered myself having a business. Um, and that's okay because we all have our own journey, right? I'm not we're trying to minimize where someone is at right now, but I want to encourage you to keep pushing. So we're the first thing you have to get under control when you're talking about the business is your mindset because I, here's what I think. I think majority of the coaches out there, there are 400,000 coaches and there's a very small percentage of them that are, you know, elite or, you know, star, whatever and above. I don't know what the actual things are, but not every coach is diamond and above. And I don't think it's because there's not enough people or there's not enough training or whatever. I think that people are scared. And I think people are scared or coaches are scared, not of the no, because that's what I hear sometimes is, is that's the easy thing to say is that, well, I'm scared of, I'm scared someone will say no. I really think that we're scared that if we actually try, if we actually do the success club tracker consistently over time, that we're scared that it still won't work and that we will have failed. So what we do is we don't really try because then we don't really fail because for three years, I didn't really fail as a coach because I wasn't really trying. So my worth wasn't really on the line because if I was like, Oh, I didn't hit that goal. Can we just turn on the printer and print it? So if I didn't hit that goal, it wasn't like, Oh, I missed that goal. It was like, I a hundred percent knew I didn't try hard enough to reach that goal. So it wasn't that I missed it. It's that I really didn't try. So it took me a while to realize that that was my, what well, my fear was. I didn't understand that. And through personal development, that is how I got there. And you know, a lot of times people ask like, well, what's your favorite personal development? I it's personal. It's personal to you. I think Brene Brown is a great uh, place to start. Rachel Hollis obviously is fire. Um, but I give you permission if you are doing personal development and you're not feeling it to just do something else. Um, but this to me, your Shakeology, your workout program and personal development are all equal. I don't think that one is more important than the other. And I think maybe sometimes we think like, Oh, I did my workout and I did my shake. But if you are not growing your mind, then how are you going to be able to be strong enough mentally to put yourself out there? Um, and I think I was on a call with, like I was listening to a team call. I should say that correctly. I was listening to a team call with um, the Fitzpatrick's and um, they said like, you will grow in this business just as much as equal to a amount of personal development that you do. Um, and I really agree with that. Hey, Kim, stop, stop. Stop hitting the printer button right now. I unplug it, but I'm afraid I'd, I'm going to unplug the computer. So um, when we're, you're working on your mindset, this is something that I decided last year that I was really going to focus on. And it took me like a year to get the, the rhythm down that like that worked for me. But we have to get rid of comparison of other coaches. I think that's like number one. And I think it's really, really hard because social media is so fast, especially nowadays. Like you can watch another coach's Instagram stories and then you can go to another coach and then you just spend like a whole bunch of your time watching other coaches doing what they're doing, but they're not watching you because they're doing their thing, right? Like they're in their own lane doing what they need to be doing. And so they're not worried about what other coaches are doing. So, um, it's hard and my only tip is to like stop, <laughs> just stop, unfollow them. And I think you should follow, if, if there's any feeling ever, and you, there could be the most amazing, like Brigida, you could follow Brigida and if even the slightest bit of envy or comparison comes up, you need to just unfollow her. And because it really has nothing to do with her, it has everything to do with you. And that temptation will be there 
if she's there in your feed. Um, I've had, but then there are certain coaches. I think you could follow like two, you know what I mean? For inspiration who really get you fired up and make you feel good. I think there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's inspiring, not envious. And then any time that you start telling yourself that, oh, I'm not enough of something, I'm not far enough, I didn't make enough, I didn't lose enough, I didn't, any of that, you have to just kind of out loud say like, oh, we're not doing that. Like it can be kind of an awkward conversation with yourself, but you have to rewire your brain. But if you're stuck in comparison, then you're never going to share about the business because you're going to be thinking about what other coaches are doing, where they are in the business, where you're just in your lane. You are just in your journey with this coaching opportunity and this coaching journey. Um, so the not enough need, needs to stop. So I think what made the big difference in my business was when I actually started to like set a vision and a goal for my business. So I really quickly in, in regards to like success club and challenge groups had this mindset of like, I'm going to do these workout programs no matter what. So if someone joins me in this fit camp, great. If they don't, it's not a big deal because I'm still going to push play on my workout. And that was an easy, that was easy for my brain to work with. Then all of a sudden it clicked. And I was like, what if I said, I'm going to be on an, I'm going to run an elite team and you can either come or you don't. And I'm going to invite somebody and the right people will then find their way to my team. And then it just kind of clicked. And I'm not going to say like one day I was like, Oh, this is so great. It took a few, um, a few months of like saying that and then being like, you know, when you start like doing affirmations about like how strong you are and, and all the things, like at first you're kind of like, oh, I'm totally lying to myself right now, but good. Keep lying to yourself. <laughs> keep until it becomes fact. And so I always, one of the big things that I like envied or had comparison with, with coaches was a team. I really wanted my own team and like the cuteness of like the pictures and they're all like snuggled up and like laughing and doing the, the stuff. Cause I'm someone who really thrives on community and my coach stopped coaching pretty quickly. And so then I just was like, okay, I mean, I'll figure it out. And so in 2018, I was like, I'm building a team. I'm building a team. I'm building a team. And Brenna and I are success partners. That's why it says, um, my name is Brenna, by the way, because we like have our passwords for each other's things. And then we get locked into each other's Zoom's account. So, um, we would tell each other every single morning that so many people want to join our team. So many people want to join our team. So we have Voxer and Oh, this is not the right remote. That's not why it's not working. Um, so in the mornings, most of the time, Brenna and I will message each other what we did that morning for our business or like the night before, if we worked the night before, uh, because up until recently I was working and she's a social worker. I was a special ed teacher. So, um, we would just message each other and I'm not taking tally on what Brenna is doing. I'm not like, Oh, Brenna did 50 invites. It's for yourself. It's for yourself to like say out loud, like I did these things. And anytime that we started to have doubt, we would tell each other to stop. And we would say, so many people want to join our team. So many people want to join our team. So many people want to join our team. And we would literally tell each other and actually walk around the house our each, you know, our individual houses saying like, so many people want to join our team. So many people want to join our team. So I think that whatever your goal is in the business to set it, say it like it's already happening. Like you are a diamond team. You are an elite team. You're a premier team. Like whatever you, whatever you're actively working on, it has already happened in your mind because when it is a decision, then naturally it will just happen because when you've already decided you're going to the store and you're driving the route to the store, eventually you get to the store. So if you say the goal, I say every single day, I'm a, a 2020 elite coach. And then I'm, I, sometimes I make a wrong turn. I stumble, I pull over, but eventually I'm going to get there and I'm doing the things that will get me to where I want to be. And I decided that my people will find me or I will find them and we will decide we have found each other and then it will be wonderful. But you know, I shouldn't say that they'll find me, but we will find each other. And then this year at summit, I had a team here and like we had shirts and like we took pictures and we like drank energized and did a dance party. And it was everything I had ever wanted. 
because I had worked for it as opposed to sitting here wishing for it and wanting it and dreaming and hoping so very much that it comes true. I actually started doing the things. So I promise I'm going to get there. So also with your mindset, I suggest daily gratitude um, because and this is going to slide right into sharing on social media. I don't think that it's really, really big things that attract most people to coaching. I think it's really small things that, because if you think about it, when you see someone who's like, if, I, if I'm working full time, looking at a coach who's making a significant amount of income from home, coaching from home, hey, that Mama. sometimes can be a hard transition. Mama. Yes, pardon. Yes, I'll fix it. Not right now. Okay, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. The power went out. Like seriously, today, guys, this this has been the craziest day. The power went out right before the call, and then it came back on. So everything's kind of crazy. But um, so when I started doing gratitude every day, I started realizing the 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 tiny things that I really appreciated from this business. I'm doing Thank you. Okay, what do you want? This one? And then I started sharing those tiny gratitude things because that truly made the biggest difference in my life was feeling um, happy that maybe one of my coaches said something to me or happy that I had energized to get me up in the morning or happy that I was made enough income to cover my groceries. When you do a gratitude journal, you're usually not like doing these really, really big, crazy things. Sometimes they are, but that really helped me start sharing the small things that I was grateful for. And then I just became this like way more grateful person. And then that's very attractive to other people because then they're like, she's kind of a mess. Her kids are in the background and she's always so happy and she's smiley and she's positive and people want to be like that. And I'm not saying people want to be like me, but they want more positivity in their lives in general. And then we, we understand that when we're around people who are more positive, we feel better. Um, and so that's just kind of how it naturally started happening. So I don't necessarily share my gratitude, like my actual gratitude journal every day, but I, I do sometimes. And I'm just saying things naturally because if you're training your brain to think about, to find the gratitude, then when you're naturally talking on your Instagram stories, you're just naturally talking about little things that make you happy. It's just training your brain. So I will say that it has taken me about a year to get a really great rhythm in that and how I do that and now how I'm talking about it. So getting your mind right for just you and yourself is going to help support you being able to share on social media. So then you're going to share on social media what you do as a coach um, and don't overcomplicate it because if you're overcomplicating just talking about it, you're probably overcomplicating what you're doing. So when I say, when I'm like working the business, cause I think it's important to show that we, we do work like near a computer or something that's like physical. And we're not just like, Oh, I post on social media, my Instagram, like dance party. And then all these people have joined my team. Like I try to show me at my computer. And I say, my phrasing is I'm connecting with women. So like, I'll make like a little, like a little, like the text box. And I just say like, Oh, um, checked into my fit camp, connected with women or connected with babes on Instagram. And I don't know, whatever else I did something. And I just show that that's what I'm doing. So I think it's important to, Hey, stop, please. Why is it is funny. Please go downstairs and watch your tablet. No, okay, then it's fine. Usually they're a little bit better, so I apologize. Um, actually, I don't apologize, but thank you for being patient with me through this craziness of the background. Um, so showing what you do as a coach and then how people can do it too is helpful because then you're really answering their questions before they even have them. So if you're on a, like my power went out, so I wasn't doing any Instagram stories, today. but 
need you to sit down right here and let me do this. Did I say my husband was out of town? <laughs> so when I, like the other night I did and we did an emerald push on our team. So what I did is I like took a video of me um, and the computer was behind me just with the screens. And I said, okay, tonight was, today was really crazy. I had this, this, and this happen, but I'm really excited that I'm ending my Monday night doing a push call with my team because sometimes we can know what to do in the business, but we need each other to like push each other to take action. And I'm really glad that that's how I'm ending my Monday. So somebody who's watching my Instagram stories frequently is understanding that we do things together to help work the business. They don't need to know like what an emerald push is or what this is or what that is, but they're understanding that there is an action going on to support coaches who need help. So I just narrate my life and that is also part of my brand because I have crazy children and I think that there are a lot for me, there's women following me who have crazy children and think that this is like their reality, that this is all they can do and there's not a way to do anything else. And because they, they can't, they don't, maybe their husband is out of town too. And they're like, well, I can't make it work because they're always here. And I'm like, here they are. They're always, <laughs> they're always here with me. And that's okay because that's my tribe. That's my tribe. If I tried to talk to like moms of high schoolers, we would live a different life. Um, and that's okay. But this is my reality. So I just narrate my reality. So as I work the business, I just like when you start coaching and then you start posting on social media, your sweaty selfies, it's like this extra accountability piece. That's the same thing I do with what I do with working the business. I'm just not like, I try not to do it all the time and I just sprinkle it in throughout every single week. I don't care if I have a sneak peek coming up. Um, I just talk about it all the time because I'm working the business all of the time. Then talking about your story. So I talked about my story a little bit with my story with the products and then my story with, with my life. Um, I, you need to, I think you need to rotate both stories and explain where you were before, where you are now and where you're going. Um, and that's probably advice that I've heard on a lot of different team calls over all over the network and on. It's a, it's a shadow course she's discovering a shadow right now so going through your story and Brigitte complimented me so kindly that I I write posts um it is a strength of mine but it's funny because I'm actually dyslexic and I failed like sophomore English in high school and I was like had an IEP because I cannot spell to save my life Grammar is awful. I actually, a new story I can add to that, I just failed my teaching exam to get my certificate transferred to California because I failed my writing. However, social media is my strong point. How funny is that, right? But I, I make a post as if I'm talking to my very best friend. So, and that's just kind of how I've always done it because that's how I would want to read something. Thing. And that's just me. Maybe someone else wouldn't really relate to that, but I think it makes it easy to read if you feel like you're having a conversation with somebody. So if social media is not your strong suit, I think it can become that as long as you just practice. So your practice is one post a day, <laughs> one post a day. That's your practice. And eventually at the end of the year, you're going to be a lot stronger with your posts um, than you than you were when you started, but just tell your story. And I mean, I've seen exercises where people like write out their whole story and then they take pieces. I am not that planned out. I try on a rotation to um, balance like what's going on right now. And then pieces of my story that I just rotate through. I rotate a lot of um, my mom struggled with addiction and she passed away when I was 21. I tell that story a good amount um, because that's a huge chunk of what made me me. So it's important. Um, I talk about that I was a teacher. I talk about that I'm a mom um, and that I struggle with limiting belief, anxiety, and I just rotate through. It's going to come right back on. So... And then the vital behaviors, I think, are powerful, too. So 
rotating through your four vital behaviors, a call to action, what you learned in your personal development, your workout, and a Shakeology ob objection. Sprinkling that with your story, then you have like a lot of posts every single week and doing that on your Instagram uh, stories as well, not just the feed, I think is a good balance of back and forth. So other ways you can show what I do to like show kind of what we do as coaches and things like that is our team does like little team challenges. So, and they're really good about like sparking them. And if your, if your upline hasn't done it, like do it. So, I mean, our babe, Rachel, she like gets us to drink water because she tags us and we'll be like, like see a chug, send a chug. And so that's like kind of something that just shows, I think that, it's more than just me behind a phone, that there are p actually people that I'm working with and that we're talking to and we're supporting each other. Um, we do a lot of dance challenges, 90s dance mix is kind of our thing, um, or early 2000s. And so we'll just kind of like put stuff, random stuff up. And it's a fun way to show that this business is not just you behind a phone. And maybe you're like, I don't really have a team. You do have a team, you're on a call right now with a bunch of people, we are your team. So it doesn't matter if, you're not technically the upline or the downline or the side sister. I don't care. Like tag somebody that is a coach that shows that we are one big team. When you went to summit, you felt like you were a big, a part of a big, big, big team. If you didn't go to summit, get to summit. Um, but that's what we are is we're all together. And so tag a success partner, make it seem like it's not just you and that this is fun because it should be fun. If you're not having fun, then you're probably not showing fun. Um, I screen record me checking into my, um, my, my challenge tracker app. And then I put that into my Instagram stories and I kind of just put an objection in an answer form. Like, Oh, I'm checking into my groups because accountability helps us all stay together. And I love running these groups because it makes me, helps me feel accountable. So people understand that I run groups. That's what I do as a coach. Um, and then probably once or twice a week, I try to just take video of me telling a piece of my story that's just on my heart right now. And then, what does it say? Oh, and then I think that so easily we think that when we're not perfect, um, like we get in our head like, oh, I have to do it kind of the perfect way. I think the second I started leaning into how imperfect I was, <laughs> that it was a great correlation to when my team really started to grow. So your, your tribe is either going to like, it will like you for the stuff that makes you like quirky and kind of weird. And if they're not going to like you for that, then you don't want them following you anyways, because then they would get on your team and then be like, you're really weird. You're not my tribe. And then it wouldn't work. So just show your, let your freak flag fly now so that they understand who you are. And then they are attracted to you right now. So a t a r and it's funny because I'm actually really, really type A in regards to like, I don't know, I, my mind, but you wouldn't know it <laughs> from my life. But somebody who really, really uh, cares about, well, no, I think that actually people have come on my team who used to struggle with caring more about what people think of them. And now because maybe I had shown, I had gone first and been like, hey, I'm just a mom and it's okay that your house is a mess and your kids are in diapers in your team call behind you. Like it's not a big deal. And then they feel like, Oh, that's how I would like to be. I, I want to work on that or, or, you know, that's whatever. And so your, your team starts to come to you then. So that's social media. That's you talking about stuff all the time. Talk about all the things all the time. And if you're not being salesy or weird about it, it's not going to come off salesy or weird. So just naturally talk. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Like whatever planning or you're doing right now in your head, just take a video of us doing this right now, put it on your social media. Like you don't need to, I always mute it because they don't need to hear what we're talking about. They just need to see that it's happening. And then say how you feel about it because when someone feels a connection to what you are feeling that is really really powerful also sharing about all of the things so I wrote down here and I think there's a lot of probably more but coaching has made an impact on my life from before I ever made 
any dollars, zero dollars, I was still a better person for becoming a coach. And so sometimes we have this comparison, like I haven't made enough or I haven't done enough or I haven't lost enough. I didn't hit that rank. It's taking too long. But anybody outside of Beachbody has no idea what Emerald or Diamond or Star Diamond or Elite, they have no idea what these things are. And so when you're in your head like, I'm not there yet, your people have no idea what it is. And no other coach who is more successful than you is looking back at you thinking, you better go quicker, girl. No, because any coach who has achieved that goal is like, this is hard and you got it. You got it. If you ever looked the higher you go up in the network, I feel the more supportive they are because they're like, I understand and I remember how hard it was. It's still hard up there where they are achieving their goals, but nobody ever looks back and is like, hey, like that's not what we are. So share where you're at. And even if it's the small changes of like, I used to really struggle with my confidence and now I like only kind of struggle with my confidence or it's becoming a lot better. And maybe it's just like a two degree difference. Two degrees is a lot. It's a lot of change. Or I, I just think that we would never look at someone in our fit camp and be like, you only lost one pound. Like, gosh, no, we would never do that. And so why would we ever do that to someone who's like, Oh, wait, I earned $50. $50 is a lot of money to a lot of people, including myself. And so sharing that you covered a bill or got groceries or treated yourself to something great is very impactful to the followers who are following you and are thinking about doing this as a business. So don't shy away from any of the categories of income, health, mental, and community of the ways that you have been impacted from this business. And I don't care if you signed up yesterday um, or four years ago, you have a story of, of at least where you want to be. For me, when I was a teacher, I looked at my, I could look at my pay scale for the next 35 years. And that made me very angry that in 35 years, I still, I didn't like the number at the end of, of my career because I felt like I had worked so hard to get out of my childhood and my struggle to then look at my life and be like, but I did the things. I went to college. I got the career. I married the guy. Then I had the baby. I did it in the right order. Like, why are you punishing me from stop, like not being able to pay my bills? And I felt very upset at that at 25 years old. So from the second I became a coach and just having the ability to dream and to hope and to set goals that I actually could achieve if I worked hard enough um, was powerful in itself. So sharing that is really powerful. Now, you also, sharing on social media is what I've done from the beginning. And what I said in the beginning is that I never invited to the coaching opportunity. I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you do that. You're going to be someone who invites to the coaching opportunity. Don't overcomplicate it. If I make a post about coaching and somebody likes it or comments, or I feel that they've been watching as I'm really talking through something with coaching, I'll thank them for um, supporting you know, I'll just say, thank you so much for the love on my post. Um, it was like vulnerable to share that. And it means a lot from your support. Have you ever thought about coaching? Like I do, I just keep it simple because if I were to be, um, next to somebody, I wouldn't be like, okay. And then here's a compensation plan. And then this is what we do. Like, no, I just ask them, have you ever thought about it? And honestly, eight out of 10 times I say no, but that starts the conversation. So most of the time in a challenge group and in the coaching opportunity, you have to be the one to plant the first seed. Then every time you're posting about things and you're talking about things, you're watering that seed. And then if they're still watching you, then that seed is still watering and growing. But if you never plant that seed, nothing is growing. Nothing is growing because they might not understand that they could do this too. They don't, might not understand. Maybe they missed the post where you talked about that anybody could do this or, or whatever. Um, so you have to plant the seed. So everyone and everyone needs an invite. Now you need to do that how you feel comfortable. People invite in a lot of different ways. But if you're not inviting, you're not growing this business. So you're constantly in people's DMs. Now 
I structure my month roughly two weeks, two weeks. So like two weeks talking about coaching, two weeks talking about um, challenge. Well, really it's like now it's kind of going to three weeks in one week because every single day on my Instagram stories, I see I do a workout and I see like I do that and I check into my things. And so my posts are usually more of my like deeper like content, I would say. And I get all the feels usually from being a coach, my coaching journey. Um, because even if it's technically related to someone's like transformation, I helped them get that transformation because I got them in a fit camp. So then I'm getting all the feels and I'm sharing how as a coach, like that's so cool. And I'm so proud of them and excited. Um, but I really invite to both all the time, but it's a little bit heavier in half and half in the month. So it's a little bit heavier. So it's like, you know, maybe 60, 40 of like challenge group and coach and then coach and challenge group, depending on what's coming up. And so I start a challenge group and with all the launches that we've had, like I haven't had a consistent, I don't like start it every second week of the month because we've had these kind of different crazy launches with transform 20 and then ultimate fortune, you know, like all the things. And so I just kind of follow the network and listen to other people's ideas. And I look at my life schedule and I just pick a date and I say, okay, we're starting this day. And then, um, then I look at my life and my calendar and I kind of then pick something about two weeks later where I do a sneak peek. So I'm inviting to the coaching opportunity all the time. And then I kind of like rev both up. So I'll be like, Hey, I'm going to do another sneak peek, but stay tuned on when it's coming. So I'll say that like in my Instagram stories all the time. And I'm just kind of like easy breezy dropping it in. Same thing with the challenge group. Hey, I'm going to open my enrollment for my next fit camp. Uh, stay tuned. But in the background, I'm still inviting like heavy. <laughs> so it's just on the, ins they're just, they get the invite and maybe they like, don't really answer me. And then they see in my stories like, Oh, she's going to, that's that thing she's talking about. Okay. So, <clears throat> so what I have decided after three months of trying, cause I don't think that you can do something one month and know if you like it. I don't think you can do something two months and know if you like it, you have to do it three. So I did my first sneak peek on Instagram in what is it, May, June, July. Yeah. May. And it was really awkward. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I had a new coach who signed up in 2019 and she was, she's never built a business on Facebook like I had. And so I was like stuck in the Facebook thing, even though it wasn't working for me because I was inviting, um, to the coaching opportunity and they were like, Hey, I would love more information. And then I, they'd have to like send me, Oh my gosh. And her baby is out right now. Can you it's like seriously, like probably the worst one. Candy, just go out of camera with the booty. Oh my gosh, this is seriously so my life. <laughs> this is so bad. She's taking her diaper off, but she won't potty train, which I know that means she's ready, everyone. But like we just started preschool today. So we're just going to take step into my life. Okay, so then someone would have to send me a friend request or I'd have to find them on Facebook and it just turned into a thing. Because then how am I supposed to get them into the sneak peek? And like it's just... Like it was just too much. I was losing people in the process. And like, I think I was on a call, like the bombshell dynasty had this, like has like this elite push group and Holly Hillier was like, um, notifications aren't coming up when someone goes live in a group anymore. She's like, so I kind of like lost the thrill of the Facebook, uh, sneak peeks because, the cool thing about it was that it was notifying you all the time. And so anyways, it just kind of solidified that I was glad I wasn't doing them in there anymore. But it's awkward at first because when you've never done something, you're like, I don't know what to do. So my new coach who had never built on Facebook was like, why are we doing, why? Like, this is kind of dumb for her. And she's like, I might do something else. And I was like, okay, I encourage you to do that. And then I was like, Hey, can we do it together? So she was a brand new coach and had like such a great idea. Um, and then simultaneously in the beginning of the year, there was like another, what was that group called? It was like build your legacy or build your dynasty or I don't know. It was just like an offered training. One of the things that we had and Melanie Metro shared this. Well, let me share. Um, shared this in the thing about how to run an IG story sneak peek. So 
this is what she is sharing in her, um, and I can like give, this isn't mine, obviously, this is Melanie Mitchell's, um, but I'll give it to whoever so we can add it to, or we, I can add it to the files in Team Ford Fitness. Um, but these were just the top, like, topics that she had used. So transformations, common fears, talk product to me, travel perks, bottom line, how do I earn, uh, what's the cost, what to expect from me as a business partner, uh, questions to ask yourself and steps to get starting. Now this is all that she gave us. So she didn't give us like her, what she says or any of that, but we took these nine things and that's what we made into our, the nine posts that we have on our, well, it should be nine, the nine posts that we have on our Instagram sneak peek. So yeah, so then like tra transformations, we just took our team and we just, um, oh, how do I change oh, over here? So we just took our team's transformations and we just shared them. And then a lot of the posts at the bottom just had um, like a question, like, doesn't this fire you up like to have a transformation like this or or if you see your coach who invited you, like drop some love or I forget what we said. Um, and then what we did is we, uh, everyone, so it's also a little tricky to run it with a team. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you it's not, but it's, it's doable. At one point, Instagram asked me like, um, is this a, um, what did it say? Like we, we are detecting curious, like curious behavior in Connecticut because a coach was logging in because I made a new Instagram handle with like a new email with a new password. And I gave it to the people who were actively trying to build the business on my team. So it wasn't everybody got the password. It was just like, Hey, if you're inviting to this so that you can go on and go live. Um, and I'm okay. So so I invited to the sneak peek and, and the first time I did a three day sneak peek. So they would go up and then I would go live a couple times and then we would kind of like go in and share our why, share our transformations. The next month it was on, it was the month of summit. So we kind of like shared from summit. It was not the best one, but then I, I just realized that for me, if someone is really interested in growing the business or interested about learning about the business, they just want all of the information. So the sneak peek is now one day and I have them scheduled to go up. Bop, bop, bop. People have the, um, the password or whatever to go in and to share their why, because I really think that, um, it's that, that connection to why somebody is doing something is more powerful than like, oh, I earned X amount or I lost this amount. I think when you hear the coach who invited you to the sneak peek, their heart, and they say like, I just love this because of whatever they love it for, um, that that speaks to them. Then in the, the text box or whatever, I say, okay, we're going to have a webinar. So I did the sneak peek all Saturday where I just put up the post and we shared our whys. Then I went live like Saturday night or something. I don't know, or Sunday morning. Like it doesn't have to be, it's whatever works for you. It's literally, there is no magic formula. It is just whatever works for your schedule. So then I said, okay, we have a coach webinar. So I'm inviting to the sneak peek and then also to a webinar. So I do think that there's something powerful of inviting someone to something that's like happening because it kind of forces them to say right now, like, yes, I can be there or no, I can't, or can I watch the recording? It just promotes more opportunity for conversation. I don't know if you noticed what I'm strategically trying to put my head where Cami is just laying out there. So, um, Oh, this child, she will be the death of me. So I know we're wrapping at an hour, so I apologize. But, um, okay, so, so then I did the sneak peek and then I scheduled my month so that the, the webinar was on Sunday night and then Monday was our new coach call. So I was like, if you want to join this team, we need to do it now because on Monday we're all getting on and we're doing the new coach call. Um, and then And then I structured it accidentally Yes, this is a different Instagram page. Um, so I added like a whole new Instagram handle and I just did coach boldly because my team is coach, uh, team coach. No, what is it? Team bold fitness. I don't even know my own team name. Woo. So 
um, I just like made, actually Rachel made it. She was like, how does this sound? I was like, perfect, great. She made the graphics because she's a marketing whiz and uh, she's good at that stuff. So she then did it. And um, then we, it was like a new email that we just kind of created. So then I structured it so that on, it was a busy weekend for sure, but it really did pay off. So it was, I invited hard all week to the sneak peek. Saturday all day was the sneak peek. Sunday was the coach webinar. Monday was the new coach call. Tuesday is normally our team uh, call night and I did a live power hour. So all of the new coaches were invited and then all we did was a power hour. So it was like, this is what you do. This is how we do it. Um, and that was kind of how I then used a little bit of momentum to get these new coaches going. Now, my first coach sneak peek, I signed up zero people from it. Okay, let's just put that out there. Um, my after summit, I really didn't sign anybody up from the sneak peek. Then this last sneak peek, because I have been very diligent about sharing on my own personal Instagram stories, all of the answers to all of these questions, before we even get into the sneak peek, the only thing the sneak peek does is helps narrow down who's really interested or who's watching or who's curious. Um, but I'm already answering all of these questions on my, on my normal everyday kind of life. So it just lets me know who's interested, but I think I signed, I don't, I don't even know. Honestly, the last couple of weeks have been really, really crazy and really, really great. But ultimately we're starting to start qualification tomorrow. So it's like, it's working for me because I figured out exactly what would work for my schedule and how to make it work. But I would encourage you to just go, just do it. Just do something, figure it out and fail forward. If this is something that you feel you need um, to implement and then try it for three months and you're going to tweak it a little bit every month until you find the rhythm that works for you. So um, thank you for being patient with the craziness that just occurred. That was perfect. <laughs> and I, for one, love, love, love. Here, let me, uh, I have you on a full screen here. Here we go. Okay. Um, but thank you so much. I loved that we could see <laughs> <laughs> your kids in the background because it really does just I don't know like I love it I love the, how you worded everything I love that you share your life and you're like this all is how you're getting people to join the business you know by how you're talking about things on social media so um and yes if you will go ahead and share that document like from Melanie into the team page I think that would be really great but um you know, I just hope everyone, the biggest takeaway I hope everyone gets from this that I like, at least for me that I'm getting is that this sneak peek is something that you do on the daily, you know, and if you're doing it on the daily and you're constantly talking about what you do, then there's no need to do the extra, you know, it just takes care of itself. Um, but thank you so much for getting on this call, Samantha, and for being willing to do this uh, with the kids. <laughs> you know, live happening in the background. And I will share this recording in the team page. Thank you all for being on. Have a great night.